I actually don't know how I slept because I, I woke up facing the other side of the bed. But yeah, the time's about six thirty now, um, which is about an hour ahead of the time that I usually wake up. But I slept really late yesterday. So yeah, basically in this video, it's just gonna be like I guess a day in the life, and I'll be dropping some trading advice, and you know, I hope you guys can take along and enjoy. All right, see you in a bit. He said, man, when you gonna change your attitude? I said, ain't nothing wrong with my attitude. He said, yeah, it is. He said, when you wake up in the morning, man, you got a bad attitude, which pretty much explains why you've been having a lot of bad days. And he said, man, I hate that about you, man, because you're such a cool dude. You got so much potential. He said, man, I'm sorry to bother you. And he hung the phone. All right, so I'm done with that. <laughs> Of course, the first thing that I do when I wake up actually is on my mind when I go to sleep <laughs> is just to make sure that, um, you know, if whatever running trades I do have, even though before I sleep, I always move the trades above my stop loss, right? So the first thing I do when I wake up is just come and basically switch on my trading station, uh, which you guys can just have a look there. I'm still setting it up. There's still a lot of work to be done here. But yeah, you know what it is. So let me just get that on. While it's starting up, I'm just gonna go make a cup of coffee. So. now so it's time to head to the office and yeah update myself on the day you know just update myself on what's going on etc um i'll actually give you guys more details when i get to the to the office all right so see you guys when i get there So uh, let me start by explaining uh, what financial markets actually do. So uh, what they basically do is they, uh, they channel funds uh, from those uh, who have more funds than they need to those who need more funds than they have. In normal times, uh, the, uh, the, the prices in financial markets, so the stock prices, the bond prices, they uh, incorporate all the information and the expectations about the future developments, uh, and they do so, uh, so in a more uh, gradual fashion. But when uh, there is a crisis, uh, everything becomes much more abrupt. So uh, often the financial system does not work properly anymore. There is a lot of uncertainty. I mean, take the corona, uh, the corona crisis, and nobody really knows what is going to happen. I mean, we have certain scenarios, but the uncertainty is very large. And this then implies that the prices in financial markets uh, become uh, very uh, volatile and many markets... All right, guys, so basically... Um, I'm done checking what I was checking out this morning. Uh, I had a few trades running on GBPUSD yesterday before I went to sleep. They hit stop loss. <laughs> so uh, they took me out, I think, minus about minus $220, which is roughly 2.5 here. But anyway, that's, this is just part of the process. You know, I don't, I take uh, my winners just the exact same way I take my losses right because it's all part of the process and i do understand that 
you know, so long as my risk uh, to reward always remains the same, statistically, statistically, I'm going to remain profitable. I do still have some trades running actually on USD JPY that have more than mitigated my losses. Um, I'll show those to you guys later on. I'm going to take a quick shower before I then look at the London session, see what's happening on the London session. I don't usually trade the London session because <laughs> I may be smiling, but I'm not a morning person. So I don't usually trade the London session. I just usually look at the liquidity because it helps move to certain key levels. Okay, and one thing about the London session, it usually gives you either your high or low of the day. All right. And um, my favorite, of course, session to trade is the New York session. But nonetheless, before I do anything, right, I, had, I come to my desk and I check out um, some weekly commentaries, right, from Wells Fargo. Uh, Wells Fargo is also one of the biggest uh, investment advisories, one of the biggest investment banks. So I usually check out, I usually check them out. I check out the weekly commentaries and I check out whatever articles they have published based off of the global economic view, etc. So that I can have a good grasp of which directional bias fundamentally the market is taking. Okay, because remember the markets do move for fundamental reasons. And then I checked out the Goldman Sachs. <laughs> Definitely, you know, I've been actually waiting for this uh, Goldman Sachs Form 10K report. Uh, it comes out annually, right? So they just published their earnings for 2020 and one thing i can tell you is that investment banks uh from what i've seen and you know just back testing and reading and checking out their earnings these guys make so much money during a market crash okay so we do i do have a lot to learn from them i also check out the overnight rates okay overnight rates overnight bank rates basically what an overnight rate is uh banks Banks are required to hold a specific retainer percentage of whatever you deposit, right? So last time it was about 2%, say it was about 1.5, uh, the Fed requires the bank to hold that deposit. So if, if I deposit 100,000 pula in the bank, um, they are only required to hold about 1.5%, which is 1,500 pula, right? So basically what happens is sometimes they overrun that and they don't have that retainer. So they borrow money from another bank. You see, they borrow money from another bank and then the bank charges them that overnight rate. Why is that overnight rate important to me? Why do I monitor it? Because generally it just tells me the direction that the Fed is also giving, uh, the, the interest rate that the Fed is giving the, the, the banks. So yeah, this is how I start my day really, <laughs> you know, I like to start by following traders that I would like to emulate and the traders that I'd like to emulate are all in investment banks. Okay, because those are the guys that move the market anyway, you understand? Um, that is the very minority, <laughs> very minor uh, section of traders that actually do make a living in this industry. So yeah, uh, enough blabbering. I'm running out of time. I want to take a quick shower, clean up, and then come back, check out my, check out the landing session, have breakfast. Of course, there's some things I need to do throughout the day, but yeah. See you guys. you have for new traders don't follow what's popular <laughs> I think if there's one thing I've learned is that um, I had to unlearn everything I learned because I followed people for the wrong reasons you understand yeah 90% of people in this market it's a fact over 90% of people that do trade are not successful and I think for the basic reason that we don't emulate what the successful people do success leaves clues right yeah so instead of following uh, a trader maybe I had to stop myself from following a trader that I admire because they bought a, a specific car and actually start uh, following what the bank does because yeah. <laughs> the investment banks because those are the true traders anyway okay. so yeah that's my tip
All right, guys. So like I did say before in the previous segment is that usually when we get the lantern session, they move price to a specific key level. And by key level, I'm talking pivot points, right? So as you can see with uh, GBPUSD, GBPUSD moved me to the land during the London session. I took a trade. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I, I, I didn't want to take the trade, but I took it because I had lost out yesterday. Remember this? Yesterday I took a loss that I, I hit my stop loss this morning. It turns out to just be like uh, a stop hunt, as you can see this big wick over here. So I did re-enter. I did re-enter on GU. It actually went into 50% of my order block on the weekly time frame, which, you know, my order block, the order block trade uh, is a trade that usually statistically about 80, 70 to 80% of the time is very accurate in terms of catching some pips. Of course, uh, the pips differ according to the fundamentals that move the market. But immediately, every time when I go into profits, into decent profits, I always move my stop loss above entry right because at the end of the day capital preservation is a lot more important than profiting you understand because if you lose your capital you don't face the you don't get a new opportunity the following day and you miss opportunity and missed opportunities are just costly in this market so nonetheless i i executed some trades on gu i don't know if the camera can see Yeah, so I executed some trades on GU um, this morning. The cells, the cells that I executed, uh, I executed cells yesterday. I got stopped out, then I executed again this morning, which, like I said, is the high of the day. And I'm sitting on $332 at the moment. My balance is $422. So, yeah, let's have a look. I'm just gonna monitor this I don't, I'm not a chart zombie so I only open the chart to analyze and place in trades and then obviously I can read interesting stuff you know listen to some podcasts um, as you guys can hear the podcast playing in the background that's Jim Ron one of my favorite motivational speakers so yeah I'm just gonna get back to work now I'll uh, see so you guys in a bit I'm gonna make breakfast I think at like 11 p.m. I'm having it late today but that's because the GU move kicked in a bit late Nonetheless, let's get to it. In the journey of personal development, one of the first things to learn is the lesson of the season. Let me cover as much of this as I can before we take our first break for the day. The lesson of the seasons. For your notes, life and business is like the changing season. One of the best ways to illustrate what's happening in your business, what's happening in your life, is this illustration of the changing season. Frank Sinatra used to sing. Life is like the seasons. Now, here's what's next. You cannot change the seasons. One of the things to, you know, come to grips with is what you can change and what you cannot change. You cannot change the seasons. But here's the next phrase. But you can change yourself. Therein lies the chance to live an extraordinary life. Learning to change yourself. In an economic sense, my mentor put it this way. To climb the ladder of success as high as you wish to climb, here's the key. Work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Work harder on yourself than you do on your job. He said if you work hard on your job, you can make a living, which is fine. But if you work hard on yourself, you could make a fortune, which is super fine. Then let's put it in philosophical language. Two things on economics, philosophically. Here's the first one I learned. Your income is primarily determined by your philosophy. You know, I didn't learn that until I was 25 years old. They never taught it. All right, guys, so I think I'm done for now. Um, maybe I'll trade the New York session, but so far I don't want to be too greedy. I don't want to be too greedy because GU has actually surpassed my targets. And USDJPY as well is doing good. I have a swing position from the last interest rates. And yeah, it's, it's doing all right. So I might uh, move my stop loss above and way below entry on my GU sell. Because G is very volatile these days. Um, but nonetheless, I know that for one UJ and GU, uh, over 80% negatively correlated, right? So when UJ buys, G is gonna sell, right? So that's why I took the UJ buy and the G sell. Not mainly that, but <laughs> those are one of the reasons that gave me confirmation to say, okay, let me spread my risk 
on one instrument and another, right? So I'm gonna head, I'm gonna head out and just get some few groceries right now. Uh, maybe come back during the New York session, see what's happening. But nonetheless, let's go, fam. Alright guys, so I'm just making lunch, a quick lunch. I already have a meal, a meal prepped that I cook well in advance. So I'm just gonna cook some, boil some sweet corn quickly. Uh, that will be my lunch. This side is there's rice and a steak. And then in terms of the trades, in terms of the trades, I'm still running in blues. The trades are still in blues. Um, those are the GV cells I took. My stop loss is at about $250, which is about 50% growth on my account. I think that's that's decent. So for now, it's a game of patience, you know. It's just a matter of patience. I'm, I'm just chilling. I still have those USD JPY uh, sales, uh, trades, not sales, those USD JPY trades running. Yeah, I took these in January after the interest rate decision. Okay, and I want you guys to understand that the interest rate decision is by far the single most important uh, news release because it, it determines uh, how much money is in the economy. Okay, so it actually determines economic growth. Obviously, it's more. The story is not even on. It's more. <laughs> it's more. Uh, interest rate decisions are more actually quite long term. So after every interest rate decision, you you have a good idea as to where the Fed is looking to to push or to to get the economy in that direction. All right. So from here, the shop, gym, obviously, um, you know, I'll be updating you guys what's going on. I hope you guys are enjoying this so far. I know it's, 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 it's pretty basic and simple. But yeah, I hope it's really some good insight. And uh, I'll see you guys at the grocery store. getting a few groceries uh, right now. I don't know if you guys can hear me, but yeah, I'm just getting a few groceries and then we're off to the gym. Hey, yo, T. What up? Can you tell me, though, why is Nasdaq so volatile at 4.30? Have you seen in the movies where there's, like, a trading room in Wall Street? Yeah. And then all of a sudden there's, like, a bell that goes, and then people start dialing and calling and calling? Yeah. That's it. Basically, it's called the opening bell. The opening bell. Yeah, it's called the opening bell. Uh -huh. So what happens with, at the opening bell is yeah. that the, trade, the trading desk start to open uh -huh. and they start dealing the stocks. All right. So there's a lot of money going to the stock market in that period, which makes, then makes it volatile. Ah. Yeah.
this life's a competition So if I'm going to play, then I'm gonna play to win it I refuse to sit and rot at a desk all day Unless I have a passion I'm working towards, okay? I'd rather be dead on the outside than inside A bullet to the head than 25 to life In a cubicle alone just trying to get by Building someone else's dream instead of building mine If you're hearing me, this is meant to inspire If you have a dream or if you have desires A girl in your life that's making you feel that fire Go fight for her man, go die for her man Cause you only have one life, one chance to do it one chance to prove it to yourself, so don't lose it You got this fan, just keep pushing on Do it one day, you'll look back so glad you pursued it Yeah, things are gonna get better real soon Yeah, I'ma just do me, you just do you I swear it's gonna get better real soon Don't let anyone tell you what you should do I got a clear view we're gonna make it soon Just keep pushing through You're what you got to lose You're what you got to lose You're what you got to lose Just keep pushing through Cause what you got to lose on the trades let me quickly check yeah geo's still going away it didn't hit my trading stop and there we go this is what it's looking like so far yeah i think that's decent for me i think that's that's decent i mean it is i was looking at it to be a swing trade so i'm just gonna trim my stop a bit lower so that at least you know i can put it at double the account which i think is it's, it's more than decent growth you know so i'm just gonna make some dinner hit the shower i have a meeting with my students a live session with my students i hope you guys did enjoy this journey nonetheless all right <laughs>